We are less than one week away from opening day, and there's a lot of questions about who's going to be on this Angels roster in 2023, and how long do we have to wait until we know this team is legit or not? It's Fan Mail Friday, and we're getting to all your questions, so it's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Every show is free and available on all platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. The best way you can help us out and give something back to the show is by giving us a rate and a review. We would really appreciate that. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed. Click that bell to be notified whenever we have a new episode and be sure to comment below. I really appreciate all the comments from yesterday's show. It was great to hear from you. It really helps out the channel a lot. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Thanks for being here with us for this episode of Locked On Angels, where it is your team every day. Normally, you have the Frisch Brothers, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John Frisch. I'm one half of the Super Halo Bros., And Locked On Angels. My brother Mike is still down at Disneyland with the family. So if you see him there, say hello. He'd love to talk Angels baseball with you. But it's Fan Mail Friday today, so we're answering your questions that got sent to us on Twitter at Locked On Angels or at Super Halo Bros on Instagram. And I think we have quite possibly the greatest voicemail we've ever received. So we'll share that with you later on in the show. There's a lot of questions regarding the roster coming into the season And, of course, the fourth outfielder. And a lot of people feel like Mickey Moniak has made a case for himself this spring to be the fourth outfielder. He's had a very studly spring, is what I'll say. Uh, But here's a couple questions here. Stefan Muma on Twitter said, Totally understand the uh, issue with contracts and options, but not just reacting to today's game. That was a few days ago when he sent this question in and... Moniak had just hit a grand slam his second home run of the day by the way I truly believe Moniak has played his way onto the opening day roster yeah he'd get more ABs in AAA but he's the guy you want off your bench to pinch hit and be the fourth outfielder and then MLB fan on Twitter also said Moniak is going beast mode in spring what is ideal for him and the team I like how he finished that question what is ideal for him and the team Let's get into his stats first for from spring training so far. He's had 18 games, 46 plate appearances, 8 runs, 18 hits, 4 of those were doubles, 1 of those was a triple, 3 of those were home runs, again, 1 of them was a grand slam, 11 RBIs, 2 stolen bases, 2 walks, and 9 strikeouts. That is good for a 409 batting average, a 435 on base percentage, a 750 slugging percentage, and get this, a 1.185 OPS. Those are numbers you like to see from Mickey Moniak. Now, I think Phillies fans would say, yeah, this is what he does in spring. Mickey Moniak is a spring training genius, and he's proved that with us so far this season. In regards to the question, however, about what's best for the Angels and Moniak, Here's what I truly believe. I think he's earned this spot. And I don't want to take that away from Mickey Moniak. But I will say, I don't believe the Angels will do anything to compromise the roster that they've built for 2023. You've got veteran players all around the field. Guys who have been there before. Except maybe Logan Ohapi, who, of course, will work in tandem with Max Stassi. But I don't think that DFAing Brett Phillips in favor of Mickey Moniak is a smart move. Number one, because they paid him a million dollars to be here, gave him a major league contract. That is up for debate whether that was a, a good worth use of money. But I do think that Phillips will be a great fourth outfielder defensively. But I also have to believe that the Angels won't do anything to compromise the depth that they've created. And when you DFA somebody at the beginning of the season, they're gone. They're gone for good. And I shouldn't say that. I guess they have to go through the process, but somebody's going to claim them. And then 
now they play for another team on on your dime minus the the minimum, right? So all of that to say, I think that Brett Phillips will start this year as the fourth outfielder. Obviously, that could change, but I don't think the Angels want to compromise any of the depth that they've created. And I'll get into that a little bit later with some other potential roster spots. Here's a good question from the Anaheim native on Twitter. Would you be in favor of having Ward have less ABs to split with Moniac and then move Phillips to AAA? Well, again, in order to get Phillips to AAA, you'd have to DFA him. Obviously, he would get claimed by somebody and get to play for them at a discount versus what the Angels would be paying for. Also, I'm not going to take any at-bats away from Taylor Ward. He had a breakout year last year, and even though he got hurt, you could see that before he got hurt, he was fantastic. And when he started to feel better at the end of the season, he was fantastic again. And if you've been watching fantasy draft stuff, you're going to see a lot of those guys say, take Taylor Ward for your outfield. That's a great option. And I think it's because he's going to bust out once again in 2023. Game over 27 on Instagram said, is Logan O'Hoppy making the big squad to start? That's a great question, and I have to believe so. The fact that he was catching Shohei's bullpens early in spring training before he left for the WBC, it indicates to me that there's a plan for Ohapi. I understand I just got through saying, well, they got major league talent all around the diamond. That's true, except for Ohapi's case. He is technically still a rookie. But working in tandem with Max Stassi or whoever they have, as another catcher on the team. I'll talk about that in a second. I I think that it's okay to give a rookie, especially a guy like him, the opportunity to catch this season. So I think he makes camp. I think that he starts the season with the Halos. Hey, Andres Jimenez Jr. on Twitter sent us a DM, and he said that he would actually prefer to DFA Phillips and Quijada, and that way you would have Velasquez as a fourth outfielder because he can also play at shortstop. So essentially he's saying, if you're going to have a guy with a bad bat and a good glove, why not somebody who can do both? One at short and one in the outfield. And then as far as his his bullpen goes, he's got Davidson, Berea, who also kind of have the six-man role, Estevez, Herget, Loop, Tapera, Wance, Warren, and more. Number one, I don't think you want to get rid of Jose Quijada. The guy is electric. The guy gets amped up. And you can see that he performs better when there's energy, when there's fire. I think the WBC proved that. Team Venezuela really benefited from him bringing the electricity and the fire. Isn't it weird how some guys just perform better with pressure? And that seems to be Quijada in this case. Now, as far as Velasquez playing both roles, look, I think that you better serve Velasquez by giving him reps in AAA. And I also think that he should stop switch hitting. I think that he needs to go down there, bat from the right side exclusively, stop trying to hack at everything, stop trying to hit everything out of the stadium like he does. Because when he's consistent and makes contact, he does a good job. He just strikes out a lot. And so I think you you owe him the opportunity to uh, have some reps in AAA. So again, I'm sticking with Brett Phillips as the fourth outfielder, I understand that it's not the ideal situation or the situation that makes the most sense sometimes. But really, I think that between Mickey Moniak and Brett Phillips and maybe Andrew Velasquez, you start with Phillips on this roster. You don't make any moves like DFAing anybody because you just got depth, right? You just got it. And you don't want to get rid of it again. You don't want to throw it away freely. You don't drop depth. And as the season continues, we're going to need all of these guys because as they say, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And you're going to need every single one of these bodies, these players to be on the field for you. Paulius on Twitter asked angels bench spots are a hot commodity. Yeah, they are the the hot commodity. We've always wished for who gets the spots. Well, you're going to be surprised when I say this, but obviously I think David Fletcher is there. I think Brett Phillips is there. And I think they carry a third catcher in Matt Theis. 
Because again, the DFA issue. If he gets DFA'd and sent to the minors, somebody could scoop him up. You bet that somebody's going to scoop up a number one pick from the 2016 draft and see what they can do with him. And just because he's been moved around a lot in the Angels system, I think that's why Matt Theis hasn't really come through yet. I kind of wonder if he's similar to Taylor Ward in that way. So again, I think Fletcher's on the bench. You've got Brett Phillips. You've got Max Stassi. You've got Matt Theis also on the bench. And then I think there's a world where in which you can have eight relief pitchers, including uh, Tucker Davidson as your swing man, and have a fourth guy. So probably Gio Urshela or, or Renjifo, those guys are going to split time out in the field as well. So again, a lot of options for the Angels this season, which is a great thing, a problem that we didn't have in the past, and a good problem to have. Hey, coming up on Lockdown Angels, more roster talk. We're going to talk about the bullpen. We're going to talk about a few other spots. And at what point in the season can we buy into the Angels? We'll talk about that coming right up. Hey, Locked on Angels is brought to you by the Ultimate Pro Baseball GM game. Have you ever wanted to be a GM of your own baseball team and manage your own professional baseball franchise? The Ultimate Pro Baseball GM game will make all your dreams come true. Manage every strategic aspect of your team, play through the season, and lead your team to victory. With the Ultimate Pro Baseball GM game, you're responsible for hiring the right coaches and staff, managing the team finances, scouting and drafting players, managing difficult personalities, navigating your franchise through free agency, and all the ups and downs of a season. All of this is in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Pro Baseball GM is completely free and playable offline, which means you can play on the go, on your phone, as you want, where you want. And Locked on Angels listeners, get this, you get a 100% free boost to your franchise when you use the promo code LOCKEDON in the game store. So be sure you download the Ultimate Pro Baseball GM game right there on your phone. It's tons of fun. I love playing it. So visit probaseballgm.com. Scan the code in the corner if you're watching on YouTube or look it up in the app stores. Again, that's probaseballgm.com, the ultimate pro baseball GM. Start your dynasty today. And today's show is brought to you by the Game Time app. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. With the Game Time app, buying tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater is fast and easy. The app offers great deals on last minute tickets and they have their best price guarantee. On the GameTime app, you can buy tickets in a matter of seconds, two taps, and you're set. You can see images of your seats before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Discover the lowest price guarantee, and even get event cancellation protection. Tickets are sent directly to your phone, so you never have to go digging through your email. Grab tickets without the stress of the GameTime app. Download the GameTime app, Create an account and use the code LOCKEDONMLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. And again, create an account, redeem your code LOCKEDONMLB for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We want to thank you for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. And as we continue Fan Mail Friday, we're getting into some more roster talk, some potential pitching questions that have come up, and we're going to talk about it all right now. First, Garrett Varela has a question that I really appreciate on Instagram. He said, who's your favorite new addition so far as we begin to start the season? Garrett, I have to say that I'm thrilled with Hunter Renfro to add his power bat, a guy who has had near 30 home runs the last five seasons and can easily do it again, especially at Angel Stadium is such a treat because he's batting fifth in this lineup and Shohei Otani needs that protection behind him. I know he's got Rendon batting cleanup behind him and, and that's great. But also if you don't face Shohei Otani, you have number one, the challenge of facing Rendon and number two, Hunter Renfro who can take you deep easily. So to have that protection behind Shohei Otani, I think it's huge. And perhaps 
if Anthony Rendon needs a day off or eh, fingers crossed he doesn't get hurt, you can move Hunter Renfro up and still provide that protection behind Otani. It's going to make all three of those guys better. I truly believe that. So I'm excited for Hunter Renfro. He's going to have some incredible plays from right field. So many outfield assists. You guys are going to love watching him at Angel Stadium. Hey, Sandoval Season on Twitter said, who will start at shortstop on opening day? So on opening day, I'm not quite sure who's going to be at shortstop, and it's because the A's haven't decided on who their opening day pitcher is going to be. If you want the safe bet, I really think Gio Urshela will be there. He hits righties well. He hits lefties well. So he's a safe bet. As far as Luis Renjifo, I would take him if it's a lefty on the mound because he's got, as we talked about yesterday, a 909 OPS against lefties. So he gets on base, he hits them well, and he hits them hard. So I think those are your two options on opening day. David Fletcher is also an option, but I think if you want pro- productivity out of your hitters, I think it's going to go Gio Urshela, Luis Renjifo, and then David Fletcher. However, with the shift, and as frequent listener Barbara mentioned on a voicemail she sent in, you're going to want David Fletcher's glove at shortstop, especially with the lack of shift this season. So he's going to provide that necessary defense that the Angels need. So I'm going Gio Urshela. We'll see what happens. And it'll also depend on who the A's run out there as their starter. Hey, Invasion of Mike's on Twitter said, are Ben Joyce and Jake Lamb making the opening day roster? If so, who gets option DFA'd or released to make room? There's a world where you could have Ben Joyce in the bullpen and you could take Austin Warren out of the equation for the bullpen. So it really depends on your need. Now, Mike and I have talked about Ben Joyce and how perhaps it would be good to see him get some time in the minors to kind of you know, get his groove going, and then we bring him up a month in, maybe a month and a half in. But right out of the gate, I would not hate seeing Ben Joyce out of the bullpen. I think he's more than earned it. As far as Jake Lamb goes, he's depth, and I think you're going to want him in AAA because the minute something happens, you're going to want to call him up. Think of Jake Lamb as uh, this year's, um, oh, shoot, who am I thinking of? Uh, uh, Jack Mayfield. Think of him as this year's Jack Mayfield, except better, right? Except better, except major league quality. No offense to Jack Mayfield. He had some great moments with us over the last two years, especially in 2021. But Jake Lamb is going to be that Jake Jack Mayfield type, but I think he's going to produce a lot better. He can play the infield. He can play the outfield. I think he save him in AAA. He can't opt out of his contract until June. So if he is still in the minor leagues at that point, you might see him say, ah, I think I'm going to go try myself with another team. Joseph Manser on YouTube had a comment, and he said, what do you guys think about Griffin Canning? Just by going by his spring training this year, I think he may have won a spot in the starting rotation. And then there's another question as well. Actually, it says not a question, but a statement. This is from Chase Filtheth on uh, on Twitter. <laughs> Sally sells, she shells. Filtheth on, uh, <laughs> that's his name, Chase Filtheth. He said, Chase Silseth will be the sixth man in the rotation by midseason. So Joseph is wondering about Griffin Canning, Chase Filtheth. <laughs> You're just making me look like an idiot every time I say that. Uh, he says that Silseth will be the sixth man by the middle of the rota- uh, mid- middle of the season. To me, I look at these two guys, and I really think the Angels have so many great options for that number six spot. And if they want to go with Griffin Canning... If they want to go with Chase, then they have the ability to do so. They would have to move somebody off the roster in order to make room for them while Tucker Davidson is still on the roster because, again, he's out of options. You don't want to DFA him because he'll get swooped up as well. So to me, that number six spot, we keep talking about how it's going to be this guy's or that guy's. I think it's a a rotation spot by committee. I understand you want consistency out of one guy, But really, any of these guys could step up and take that role at any point in the season, and they might want to do that. They might not want a lefty in Tucker Davidson when they have a number six starter starting, and they might want to go with Griffin Canning or Chase Silseth. They might want to do that instead. So in my opinion, I think that the number six spot 
is going to be used up by a few people on this roster. Hey, James J. Cano 89 on Twitter said, without the spring, without spring training is gone, I'm not completely sold on the bullpen. Quijada struggled to get guys out, Tapera getting ejected, and loop being loop. What evidence is there that things are better than they look? Will we stick with what we have or make any major moves? Well, I'll start with Aaron Loop because he was like a last minute addition to Team USA and he only got into two games with the Angels in spring. He also pitched pretty well in the WBC for Team USA and held uh, Team Japan to one run um, that scored and it wasn't even against him. It was because he came into a bases loaded situation. I think we're going to be okay with loop and he's got this weird thing. And and I know this isn't a predictor of future events, but he's got this weird back and forth kind of season, right? Where one season he's up one season, he's down. Obviously the season before he was with the angels, he's with the Mets had an under one ERA and was phenomenal. Then he struggled out of the gate with the angels. And I think a lot of that has to do with Joe Madden. But as far as Tapera getting ejected, that umpire was just being a jerk. And if you read the article about it, the umpire was saying that he can do whatever he wants. I know Tapera's a hothead, but why do you have to pick on Tapera? Why do you have to be like that with Tapera? I think I'm going to be okay with him. Jose Quijada struggling to get guys out. Going back to what I said earlier, he's got to be in the game when the moment counts. I think that he loves the pressure. He thrives on that. Uh, Matt Moore is also part of this bullpen. I know he didn't bring up Matt Moore, but he's going to be a solid lefty for us out of the pen and build off that incredible Ranger season he had. Uh, Fast Times Under the Halo on Instagram said, no clear-cut closer coming out of camp. Wow, that's a lot of Cs. Why not loop until someone emerges a solid spring training? Well, yeah, he, he was pretty good in the WBC, two games in spring training. My problem with loop is that everything is under 90 miles an hour. You go to his baseball savant page, and all of his pitches are 87, 88, and... Obviously, he's a specialty pitcher. He's a lefty, and I, I'm not sure that he quite has the closer stuff. Now, we're not sure if they're going to go with a traditional closer in Carlos Estevez. Maybe he tag teams with Jimmy Herget to close out games. But I feel pretty good about the back of the bullpen between Herget and Carlos Estevez. Hey, Locked on Angels is brought to you by FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of Locked On. The NCAA tournament is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. New customers get a no sweat whew, first bet up to $1,000. All you have to do is download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to the point scorers and threes made. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss your chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NCAA. All right, getting into our last section of the day with more of your questions your fan mail friday questions here's one i really like from jeremy copeland what's up cope uh last year national media jumped on board with the hype train right before the losing streak and that sealed our demise no kidding jeff passan jinxed us at what point on the calendar is it safe to abandon caution and get back on that hype train how long until we know this team is legit i looked at our schedule and here's what i found we start the season against the A's, the Mariners, the Blue Jays, the Nationals, the Red Sox, the Yankees, the Royals, the A's again, and the Brewers all in April. Now, if that sounds like a lot of different teams, it's because it is. Because all teams are playing all 29 other teams this season. But to look at April and you see that you're playing AOS rival A's, AOS rival Mariners, uh, Blue Jays who are in contention for a wild card in the East or possibly even first place. You've got the Red Sox who will be okay this season. You've got the Yankees who are always in contention for first place or an AL East wild card spot, right? There's three wild card spots available to the West, the East and the central. And not everyone is going to get a spot. So those are the guys that you're competing with 
in April. You got to get off to a good start. And for me, the, the fact that we're battling against AL West rivals and good AL East teams right out of the gate in April, I say we look at April and say, how are we doing there? Uh, in May, let me give you the schedule here. We play the Cardinals, good team, Rangers, rival, Astros, rival, Guardians, first place in the Central, again, I think. The Orioles, up and coming. The Twins, also, you know, in the Central. They might be vying for a wild card spot. Red Sox, Marlins, and White Sox in May. Now, that might seem a little bit easier, but the fact that we face the Rangers and the Astros are very important games. And when we look at May, and we're at, looking back at the end of May and saying, how do we do this month? The Rangers, I think, and the Astros, we've got to compete with them. We've got to take series. We've got to take two out of three. And then finally, let me talk about June. Astros, Cubs, Mariners, Rangers, Royals, Dodgers, Rockies, White Sox. That's a pretty tough lineup. Astros, again, AL West rival. Cubs, you know, we'll see how the Cubs do. Mariners, Rangers, rivals, Royals. Eh, we should be able to beat the Royals. Dodgers, tough team. They're always going to try to compete for the uh, NL West. Rockies and White Sox. White Sox are funny to me. I'm not sure what to think of them this season. At least uh, they've moved on from their manager, right? But I, but Jeremy, I think the important thing here is that we take things month by month. I think that we look at each month and say, how do we do? Because there's such a good mixture of teams, one, that are rivals, teams that are two, tough to beat, and teams that are three, the ones we should beat, if that makes sense. Like the Royals or the A's. And in the A's case, they're teams we should beat and rivals. So I think that we should take things month by month and really assess where we are at the end of the month. But if anything... I think by June, we'll have a clear picture on if this team is legit or not. Uh, Classic Cards on Twitter said, why didn't they pull the trigger? And it's an article from ESPN from October 3rd of 2021 that says, Shohei Otani very open to long-term contract with Los Angeles Angels after four seasons. How did I miss this? I don't feel like I saw this back in October 2021. How did I miss this? Because that's very confusing to me if... He was very open, and they didn't begin any negotiations. What are they thinking? Uh, Zach had a question on Twitter about Otani. He said, what happens if the Angels can't re-sign Otani? Does the team go back on the market, or does Artie revert to his old ways? I am not sure if the Angels would go back on the market, but I do think that there's hope in the sense that we're finally investing in the minor leagues, and... They understand, and Perry Manassian understands the importance of having a well-rounded team, and I think no better demonstration of that than this year. Certainly, Otani is going to be hard to replace because you need a bat and you need an ace on the mound, and perhaps the Angels pony up the dough to get two guys next season. I'm not sure how that's going to go down, but if you want to replace Otani, it's going to cost you two players, essentially. Now, Otani will probably make a combined salary of two players in next season, whatever, whoever he signs with as he deserves, right? Scott Freeman had a, a comment on Twitter. He said, oh, how I hate saying, and what I saw in the WBC is this. Shohei demands winning. Trout tolerates losing. And for those reasons, Shohei will leave the Angels at the end of the season while Mike will stay loyal to a toxic and losing franchise. Comment? Scott, Mike Trout, was loyal to the team that brought him up. Mike Trout was loyal to the fans who adored him. And for his entire career up to 2019, when he signed that extension, the fans let him know that they loved him very much. And I think he gave it back to them. As far as Shohei demanding winning, Trout tolerating losing, uh, come on, man. It was three to two. It was a tough game. Japanese pitching was incredible. Like you had MVPs from all over the league swinging and striking out on those splitters that they were throwing so it's to me it's just that was a good game and it was a competitive game and the pitching got the best of them and we know that pitching was team usa's problem coming into the wbc uh, so i i don't think i agree with shohei demands winning trout tolerates losing uh, I, they both wanted to win and what better way to settle that than to go one-on-one -on -one at the end of the game for all the marbles i thought that was an incredible moment torrid on youtube in the comments said, if the Angels win it all this year, would they be more likely to keep everyone, including Otani, if possible, or make big changes? I remember the 2003 club was just tweaked, and the 2002 club 
was basically kept intact. There's a lot of guys on one-year deals. I think Gio Urshela, Hunter Renfro, and it's going to be interesting to see who the Angels want to keep around because obviously they have young guys that are going to be around for a while, like Reed Detmers. You've got guys like Patrick Sandoval. You've got David Fletcher on an extended deal. You've got Max Stassi for till 2024. So they have pieces in place already. And so, yes, in that sense, it will be a very similar team. But there are guys who are going to go at the end of the season, like Hunter Renfro and Gio Rochella. Unless the Angels work out a deal at some point in the season, I'm not sure if they're in the future plans, but they're in the right now plans. It'll be interesting to see what happens next year with a lot of those one-year deals expiring. Ken Bo Drennan on Twitter said, I bought an Otani jersey literally right after the WBC. Shohei versus Trout was the most exciting baseball I've ever seen. What are some of your most cherished jerseys you've bought over the years? Well, I know Mike, Mike, my brother, I almost said Mike Trout. I know Mike has a Tim Salmon jersey because he's always been a huge Tim Salmon fan. Believe it or not, I got my very first jersey this Christmas, and it was a Mike Trout jersey. And the reason I got that is because I know he's going to play out his years as an angel. But before I got jerseys, I always had the uh, the Angels t-shirts with the player and the number on the back. And my very first one, Sean Figgins. I loved that guy. And so my very first shirt was Sean Figgins. I got that probably like when I was like 19. And then after that, I had a Pujol shirt. I actually bought myself a Weaver one, which I love. And then I bought myself a Garrett Richards one too, because I was like, got to support my guy, G. Rich. That guy was a stud when he was electric for the Angels for a few years. Lisa Turk on Twitter said, according to Marino, Valley made their payments to the Angels they, and they weren't included in the bankruptcy. Do you think Diamond Sports knows the cash cow Otani is and don't want to lose the rights to broadcast Showtime? Or am I understanding it wrong? No, Lisa, I think you're understanding it, it perfectly right. I think that they have made their payments to the Angels, already said they hadn't missed a payment, which I was surprised because I thought all of Diamond Sports was in trouble, but somehow they ponied up the money to pay off the Angels, and I think they paid them off for the season. But yes, I think 100% the ratings from Angel Games, especially with Shohei Otani, especially after the WBC that was just put on, incredible. And they got to keep that on TV, and they got to make sure that they can afford it so that they can draw the ratings of Showtime, baby. All right, we got a voicemail here that I'm very excited about. I think it might be a voicemail MVP. Here we go. Hi, I'm Autumn, and I'm eight, and I'm from Buena Park. I was wondering if the Angels are going to win the World Series. Bye. Oh, my gosh. Man, I'm, I'm not a parent, but, like, I hope to be someday, and that just, like, hit me all in the dad feels right now. So if Mike were here, he'd probably cry. But anyway, Autumn... Thank you for your voicemail. Thank you for giving us a call here at Locked on Angels and asking your question. I was wondering if the Angels are going to win the World Series. Well, Autumn, I'll tell you this. Mike and I have a suspicion that some of the people at the Angels organization like to listen to Locked on Angels. They like to know what the fans are saying. Some of the things that we've said on the show have come true. And so I hope that they hear you, Autumn. I hope that somebody at the Angels organization... Perry, Artie, not probably not Artie, Perry. Do it for Autumn. You guys have to win and you got to do whatever it takes. And even if, you know, by the trade deadline you're struggling, you got to make moves. You got to go all in this season. Do it because it's our last year guaranteed with Shohei Otani. It's the year we have to go all in. These guys are coming back from the WBC with fire. And most importantly, do it for Autumn. We got to win the World Series. Do it for eight-year-old Autumn so that she has something to look forward to this season with our Halos. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen today. And for your second listen, check out Locked On Fantasy Baseball. You can win your league by listening to Matt and Dom every day as they bring you the best fantasy draft strategies. Find Locked On Fantasy Baseball wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Be sure you give us a follow on Twitter at Locked On Angels. And on Twitter and Instagram at Super Halo Bros. We love connecting with you there. And of course, if you're on YouTube, be sure to subscribe. Leave a comment below. It really helps out the channel a lot. Hey, Monday on Locked on Angels, Mike's back. We'll be back together. And we'll be recapping the final weekend of spring training. Can you believe it? Opening day is almost here. 
starts on Thursday against the A's in Oakland. But before we get to that, we'll give you a full recap of Friday, Saturday, Sunday baseball with our Halos in Arizona. Until then, my name is John. Thank you for being here with us, and we'll see you back here on Monday.